Part of learning about doing tube amplifiers is the output transformer. And um, uh, so I'd like to learn how to do that. I've, that's something I've never done in uh, 40 years. I've been an electrical engineer. Uh, so I started uh, looking at how to do um, transformers. And so I went to Reckla Metals and I got this, this old transformer here. And uh, I took the, uh, these screws out and I could, I could pull these laminations apart and get this bobbin out. And then I wound this this um, this guy here is um, a step up transformer. It goes from 120 to about 240, and I needed about 200 and f uh, about 200 turns on the secondary of this 30. This is like 32 gauge wire. Uh, so I um, a lot of people just spin this up on a drill, um, a, you know, just regular handheld drill. That's that that could work okay. Uh, I do have a lathe out in the garage. So I, I uh, put a variac on that lathe and got the motor spinning pretty slow. And then I, I made this little thing. This is, um, this is my counter. This has got an Arduino with a same smart LCD sp um, screen on it and some buttons. And then over here, this is an opto, um, uh, insul uh, opto interrupter. And the spindle that I 3D printed to hold the bobbin onto the lathe had some indexing teeth on it and I'd count how many rotations would come through. And then down here I got some magnets. So this thing would just like, uh, you know, attach right onto the lathe and I could spin up the transformers. This guy here, um, I mean, you can do it, but the, um, it's, it's not that pretty. Um, and it's not that precise because you know, the, the wires overlap on top of each other. And if you really want to get into doing output transformers, um, I've learned that uh, high performance output transformers interleave the primary and secondary windings. So say you wanted to have like 300 turns of on a primary and um, I don't know, say you wanted to have 50 turns on the secondary. So real high performance output transformers will wind on like 50 turns onto one layer on that bobbin. Then they'll wind a little, they'll wind on some secondary then they'll wind on the primary, then they'll wind on the secondary, and they're, they're interleaved in there. Um, that would be a, that's a, that's a, would be, <laughs> that'd be almost impossible on the lathe setup I have in the garage. So I started thinking about how to do a coil winder, and um, this is the project I'm working on now. It's called Faraday. Uh, I, I've procured a lot of kind of key components. I've, I've been looking into this for about six months and I really started yesterday. I did the CAD uh, drawing in FreeCAD for what this, uh, the first version of Faraday is gonna look like. I uh, got some other parts come in. Uh, this thing is gonna use an Arduino uh, with Gerbil running on it and a couple of easy drivers. Or I might use some of those um, uh, DRV8825 parts uh, then uh, uh, I'm going to use uh, chili pepper for the interface for that, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that. But let's go into the mechanical design of uh, Faraday right now. And uh, I, I cut out a lot of parts today, so you'll get to see at the end what this thing actually is kind of look like. So um, here we go. So here I have my... Uh, a Faraday coil winder up here in FreeCAD and it's uh, comprised of four pieces of uh, about half inch MDF. Well, I think it's probably five six. No, what is it? Five eighths. Five eighths MDF. Um, it's got two stepper motors. These are NEMA 17 on this side. It's got a bunch of holes in here. Back in here, this is the uh, shaft that's going to hold the uh, wire, um, the spool of wire, of uh, magnet wire you get. And then um, on these shafts here, this front one's going to have a, a drill chuck attached to it. And then this back one has a piece of uh, a lead screw on it. So what ends up happening is you're going to put your bobbin out here. You're going to run your wire through here. And then there's a, this piece, there's going to be like a, I don't even know what you want to call it. There's a feeder piece that runs the wire back and forth. And these two are synchronized, the, the rotational speed of this as well as the linear motion back and forth of this. And uh, uh, Gerbil and Machine Code for G-Code have uh, commands to actually synchronize those two things. And so it's going to be relatively easy 
to get this thing to work. So I drew all this up yesterday in FreeCAD um, and learned a lot about how the assembly mechanism works in FreeCAD and it was it's kind of a pain in the ass to do it. But I did get this uh, done enough to generate some DXF files and then I took them over to Sean's uh, CNC router this morning and we uh, routed out uh, all these, these all these parts. Well, it turns out that FreeCAD, when it exports DXF files, uh, it, it's in metric. So Sean's uh, program that he uses for CAM is called Aspire. And when it imported it, it comes in as uh, 
is uh, inches. So this thing was like 300, 300 inches long, which is like six feet. So, so, but he could quickly convert between the two. Um, and on that little, uh, on the support bracket, um, we, uh, he asked me what was the overall dimension of it. And I said it was 10 inches. So that first one that we made there, um, well, it's the wrong dimension. So we went in and we printed, we cut out another one. And the uh, that second one, we decided to actually make a feature in that support bracket so that we didn't have to do a post operation of drilling through the edge of the MDF there. And so you can see, uh, you'll see in the next video how that actually ends up working. It's pretty common uh, in uh, um, to to eliminate a lot of necessary operations for CNC work, but it's pretty it's pretty nice. It's a it's an addition that we're going to add on to the the next version of the coil winder, so that we don't have to do that post operation. Here's the assembled unit. Uh, you can see the drill truck there, and there's a switch up there. This is where the operator will actually do some manual operations. This is the lead screw that I have in here. And um, so there's going to be like a piece that fits across here. But oh, wait, first let me show you that this is where the bobbin is going to go. It's going to be on the edge of a screw. And you're going to screw that into that chuck. And over here, there's going to be a piece that moves back and forth that moves the wire. It's going to feed off this feed reel and uh, go on to the bobbin. So here's the back side of the steppers. Then let's uh, turn around and look at these pockets that I, that I uh, that Sean added in as a feature. You can see that the screws come through and then the, uh, the heads of the screws actually grab onto the MDF inside that circle. We'll make a few changes to this in the future and you know, make this a little bit stronger, but this actually is very simple to assemble. And most you know, inexpensive furniture made out of MDF uses some type of feature like this. So this thing is pretty much, uh, well, there's one more thing we got to make and uh, don't quite quite know how it's going to work yet, but, um, oh, there's another thing on the end, uh, actually a 608 skate bearing fits in here. So this is the eight millimeter lead screw hooked on with a coupler right onto the, M, the uh, NEMA 17 motor shaft. Now this is that chuck I was talking about. I actually found this on eBay. Um, it's it's called a B12 chuck. There's a B link in this in the uh, show notes here, and it fits right onto the five millimeter shaft coming out of the stepper motor. And then this shaft here is actually intentionally loose because if you're winding secondary and primary wires are typically different gauges. So here it is. Here's the Faraday uh, partially assembled. We have one more piece to make, and then we're ready to go.